conservation of momentum, and types of collisions. Some of the most powerful concepts in science are called conservation laws. They apply to closed systems, where objects only interact with each other and nothing else. Objects cannot leave or enter the system, and no external forces affect the system. They enable us to solve problems without worrying about the details of the event. And they only require knowledge of the initial and final states of the system. In the last unit, we learned that energy is conserved in a closed system. Like energy, momentum is a conserved property of nature. It is not created or destroyed in a closed system. In an open system, work is done to change the energy of the system. Impulse changes the momentum of an open system. The universe is a closed system, well, as far as we know. While momentum or energy can change in an open system, the momentum and energy of the universe remains constant. To apply conservation of momentum, take snapshots of a system just before and after an event. By comparing these two snapshots, we can learn a lot without worrying about what happened in between them. Please recall from our discussion of change of momentum and impulse. When a net external force acts on an object, it imparts an impulse I to the object, changing its momentum. This is exactly the same for a system of objects. Here it was just one object. Now we have a whole group of objects. If there is no external force on the system, the momentum of the system is conserved and the initial momentum will equal the final momentum. Both the conservation of momentum and the concept of impulse follow from Newton's second law. How about that? Let's start with Newton's second law, F equals ma. F is a net external force. Now what does acceleration equal? Well, change in velocity over time. So we substitute that in, and then we multiply both sides by delta t, and we get F delta t equals m delta v. Now since m is a constant, we can bring it within the parentheses here. So F delta t is delta mv. And what's mv? Well, that's momentum. So here's F delta t equals delta p, and earlier we defined impulse as F delta t. So right here is our impulse, impulse momentum equation. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. So let's keep going. Impulse equals pf minus p0, right? Final momentum minus initial. Rewrite that. So that's initial momentum plus impulse equals final momentum. If we have no net external force this time, we don't have a force, okay? Then the impulse will be zero, and we get initial momentum is final momentum. So here's our conservation of momentum, and here's our impulse momentum equation, all starting with Newton's second law. A Newton's cradle, that's what this thing over here is, demonstrates conservation of momentum. When the ball on the left is moving, the system momentum is equal to the momentum of the ball. After it strikes, it comes to a stop and the ball to the right moves with the same momentum. The forces on the ball striking and being struck are internal to the system, so there is no external force and no impulse. Momentum is conserved. Objects in an isolated system, so right away when you hear this word, an isolated closed system, you think about conservation of momentum. Objects in the system can interact with basically two ways. They can collide, or if they're stuck together, they can move apart. We've already said momentum is conserved. Also, the total energy is conserved in an isolated system. However, depending on the type of the collision, this energy can change from one form to another. Now look at this last sentence. We say conservation of momentum and change in kinetic energy can predict what will happen in these events. The total energy is conserved, but we're about to find out that the kinetic energy is not always conserved. We're going to categorize these types of collisions by the way the energy changes or does not change. First, inelastic collisions. This is where two objects collide and some of the kinetic energy is transformed into other forms, such as potential energy, heat, sound, light, different types of energy. Elastic collisions. 
The objects collide again and they bounce off each other, but kinetic energy is conserved. It is not transformed into any other type. And finally, explosions. An object or an object breaks apart because the potential energy stored in the objects is transformed into kinetic energy. So three major types. And then actually, inelastic collisions has two subsets. One, they can collide and bounce off each other. Or in two, they can collide and stick together. And as I just said on the previous slide, there are two types of inelastic collisions. One we're just going to call perfect. That's where they collide, stick together, and they move together as one mass. However, some of the kinetic energy is still transformed into other forms of energy. You could picture two cars striking each other and deforming each other. That energy, the energy of deformation, came from the kinetic energy of the collision. And then, I guess as good as name as any, a general inelastic collision, the objects collide and bounce off of each other, transforming some of the kinetic energy into other forms of energy. Here's where at this level we make approximations. There really is no such thing as a perfect inelastic collision. During all collisions, some kinetic energy is always transformed into other forms of energy. But some transform so little energy away, we're going to model them as perfect elastic collisions that the kinetic energy is conserved. In chemistry, the collisions between molecules and atoms are modeled as perfect elastic collisions, and that leads to the ideal gas law. Other examples that we can see would be a steel ball bearing dropping on a steel plate, a rubber super ball bouncing on the ground, and billiard balls bouncing off each other. But let's go to the billiard balls. We think it's elastic, or we'll model it as an elastic collision, but what happens when they hit each other? We hear sound, so some of the energy is going into uh, sonic energy there. Here's an example of an explosion. Let's just take a firecracker. A firecracker has chemicals inside of it that when ignited, they transform into kinetic energy, light, and sound. That's fireworks. Another example is if we have a little cart with wheels and we attach it to a compressed spring against a wall, perhaps. We push the spring against the wall and then we release it. The cart starts moving. In that case, elastic potential energy from the spring is transformed into kinetic energy and sound. You typically do hear something when a car moves. Just think for a moment. Can you see a resemblance between this phenomenon and either an elastic or inelastic collision? We'll show you the answer on the next slide. In both the inelastic collision and an explosion, energy will change between kinetic and potential energy, or other types of energy like sound and light. But they're time reversed. An inelastic collision will transfer kinetic energy into other forms of energy, such as potential energy, sound, light, etc., where an explosion will change potential energy into kinetic energy. An example of that, if you were to film, let's say, two cars stuck together by a spring, and you, you know, two little carts, you push them together, you've stored potential energy, you let them go, they spring apart. That potential energy changed into kinetic energy. But if you now take that film and run it backwards, you see two cars approaching each other, they compress the spring between them. It's just time reversed, it's backwards. So you would expect that the equations to predict the motions of an explosion and a perfect inelastic collision would be inverted. They'd be backwards. This is an extremely helpful chart for you to uh, study the different types of collisions. Even though you've probably printed this out or you're taking a picture of it right now with your phone, I strongly recommend you actually write it down. Get your hand and arm and brain all working together to write this. It'll help put it into your brain better. So we have the four different collisions. General inelastic, perfect inelastic, elastic and explosion. We talk about what happens in each case. And then this is an interesting column. Since we're dealing with an isolated system, momentum is always conserved. That's a pretty easy column. Yes is the answer. Kinetic energy, for the most part, is not conserved. The only time it is conserved is in an elastic collision. And as mentioned earlier, there's really no such thing as an elastic collision, but 
we're close enough and the math will work and give us a good prediction of what happens. So please take some time, write this down, study it, and make sure you catch the interrelationships between the various different collisions and the explosions.